morning, Coach. Mike Barber from the Richmond Times-Dispatch. I'm curious, for a new staff, what is the value of having a returning quarterback? What information can you get from him that uh, you might not have access to otherwise? Well, good morning. Appreciate your question. Well, uh, when you're a new staff, there comes, or change comes with it, right? And change isn't always the easiest thing to get accustomed to. So when you're in a program like Miami and you get to have you know, these unbelievable young men, uh, and you spoke about or asked about the quarterback in particular, you know, being the most important position on the field in terms of operating an offense, right? Uh, it's a tremendous blessing. Uh, we've, we've made it no secret. We recognize instantly and from far away, because you obviously you watch college football at every chance you get, is that, you know, Tyler Van Dyke in that quarterback room is really, really special because uh, you have a natural leader that's one of your hardest workers and competing to be recognized as the hardest worker that demands as much of himself as he does of anybody else. And uh, that type of mentality and that work ethic is also displayed in the classroom and the way he approaches community service and everything he does. So it's a tremendous benefit, uh, a huge asset for the university and the program, and certainly makes the adjustment a lot, uh, a lot more simple. Coach, to your left, the third row. Bob Holliday, WRL.com. Coach, as you came back to your alma mater in the uh, off season and assessed the program, what did you find lacking and what did you feel good about? Well, I don't know if we find stuff to be lacking. I think uh, I, what I found really impressive was that we brought in a, a regiment that was very demanding and these players attacked it and approached it with a no-nonsense mentality. Uh, and it demands, I'll tell you, it, it demands absolutely every ounce of what they have on a daily basis. And not only did they attack it, they excelled in several aspects of it and we got better. And that's critically important, right? Because your season is going to be a direct reflection of your off season. So it's a great start. Uh, there's still, you know, we've come a long way and there's a long way to go. But honestly, I'm just very thankful that they allowed us as a coaching staff to come, whether I played here or not, there's still change, right? And there's a generational gap there uh, that we're very blessed and thankful and honored that they allowed us to bring in a regimen that pushes the way it does and that all they did was approach it with a great mindset. Coach, to your right, second row right at the aisle. Morning, Coach. Uh, Jeremiah Quimby, Legacy Maker Sports Network. Uh, retirement of the turnover chain. A lot of fans are, you know, they're doing their stuff on social media. I'm sure you had a reason. Good question. Why are, why did we retire the turnover chain? You know, I think probably the media's put more thought into this than, than I have. Um, we just really focus on getting better as a program and have focused on technique, fundamentals, regimentation, academics, strength and conditioning, sports science, community service, and that's what the focus has been on. Um, it is not a, uh, a shot or a form of disrespect to anybody or anyone. Certainly, you know, history is history, and whether it's positive, whether it's inconsequential, whatever it may be, it's still history and part of your program. We're just uh, moving in a direction that, you know, right now doesn't involve it. So. That's the best way to address it, but you know, it's put it this way: it's been uh, we've been working so hard and paying attention to so many other things that are, in my opinion, much more critical to winning football games and having success that it really hasn't been a uh, a subject or a topic. So, but you know, so you know, we won't be using it. So, you guys okay with that? Okay, we good now. We could. Everybody got the the chain stuff. Okay. Thank Coach, you. thank you. To your right, fifth row, gentlemen standing. Joe Marino, Draft Network. Coach, given your background with offensive line, I wanted to ask you about your impressions of Zion Nelson. And, you know, he's been a mainstay for this offensive line for years to come. Just your thoughts on where he's at in his development. Explosive, um, really impressive athlete, great balance and body control, heavy handed, light feet. Great knowledge of the game, great feel for the game. Understands leverage, you know, can get that second foot in the ground, can just dig his heels in the ground and get his hands inside and unlock those hips and go low to high. He's an impressive guy, he really is. And uh, he's very, he has a, a very strong appetite to get better. He, he allows himself and wants to be pushed. He's always trying to find extra work. 
and he is joined by a lot of other guys that uh, on that offensive line that have the same mindset. So between him and the rest of those guys, it's really excited about that group and the team in general, but uh, we, he has a super, super bright future. Coach, to your left in the first row right in front of you on the edge. Coach, Dan Tortora, wake up call, DT.com. Welcome to the conference. Thank you. Uh, so take a look at the fact that you're coming into a conference that's going to have this model of divisions for one more season and then switch to the 3-5-5. Just what you can say about this season having divisions one more time around and what you think of that 3-5-5 model moving forward. Well, it seems like an effective, uh, a potentially effective model. When they run the numbers, it seems like over the years there's that much difference of what would have been a division model versus a non-division model. Um, you know, it's weird. I've just been spent five years at a place where you had to win your division before you advanced, and it meant a lot. You know, it meant a lot to program. So that adjustment and what it means, I'm not sure yet. It seems like the results, for the most part, end up being the same. So uh, I think, uh, you know, that'll have to run its course and take a, a couple year cohort to figure out exactly, all right, how does that really impact what we're trying to do? Coach, turning back to your right about the eighth row in the middle. Aslan Hunchabandy, warchant.com. Coach, we hear so much about culture changing. I mean, is culture merely habits? How long does it take to change a culture? And is a new coach arriving? Isn't that the sign of the culture changing? Well, I mean, we're real simple. I mean, these, I think these guys will echo that, you know, we always hammer home how you do anything is how you do everything. And that early is on time, right? That's going to be the most important factor in being successful and being productive. You got to show up. And showing up early also shows a level of mental intensity that something is important to you, right? What's, uh, what's more disrespectful than showing up late, right? What's more disrespectful than, than not paying attention to get ready to do your job, right? It shows something like that would show a lack of mental intensity. So. The way we, uh, for us, there, there really are no little things. If it's a thing, it's a thing, and things are important. They're all big things. So uh, these guys, they, they're made of the right stuff. They really are. Our job is to provide a blueprint that demands every ounce of everything they have as it relates to academics, football, community service, just doing the right things. And it comes with discipline, you know? And discipline, I, I've yet to see a good football team that didn't have discipline. And there's, there's so many things that are going on that are really, really positive with our program. You know, people have asked about challenges and change this and change that. I don't, I don't like to think of it that way. I like to think of it as opportunity, you know. Miami's been an unbelievable program for a long time. And, you know, we have an opportunity this year to get better and start elevating things to a certain standard as well. And that's the way we look at it. That's the best way to honor the past. And that's the best way to go forward. So all our focus is on us right now and getting ready for camp to have the best season we can. Coach, to your left, third row. Coach uh, Brian Murphy, WRAL. Uh, Commissioner Phillips and other coaches have called for a national standard uh, for NIL. I wonder your experience with NIL in this first year and what you'd like to see moving forward. Well, I think that uh, it's, it seems pretty obvious that as a university, as an athletics program, that our, our student athletes have done really well with NIL. Um, as a coach, you're not allowed to really delve in it. You know what I mean? So, but since it is part of the changes in college football, and it is a constitutional right, you know, we have a positive mindset towards that. And we're also very fortunate to be in arguably the best city in the world and one of the more prominent and growing cities in the entire world as well. That's, that's just constantly ascending. So all that is helpful, along with prominent alumni that you know could be supportive in a role where NIL is a real positive thing. And I know our guys have learned a lot and have benefited a lot from it. And I think as we get to know more about it, and I think that's what everybody really desires, just a little bit more clarity so that from a direction standpoint, we can all understand it better to maximize it, but at the same time, make sure that the educational aspect is real that we're providing a better path for a better future. That's what it's about, right? All the other stuff and the noise around it, I don't, I don't really get into that. It's all about these guys and their future. I know when I was a student athlete, I would have loved to have had it. We didn't. But I know that the experience as a Miami Hurricane was a game changer for me. And it's a big reason why I'm blessed to have this opportunity to come back and why I jumped right at it. So now I have to make sure that I do everything for them to have the same type of game-changing experience. NIL is part of that now. It is, and it's a big part of it right now. So, But it's still about keeping the main thing the main thing. 
you just got to make sure that that marriage of, uh, of these different things is one that makes sense and one that is productive. Back to Dan right there in the front row to your left. Coach, when you talk about coming back, and like you said, it, it was something that you wanted to jump on to be a part of this university again, what feels the same and what's different? When you step back on campus and you look around, what are those similarities and, and what to you is, is changing at Miami? Well, the first thing, it still is a difficult choice, you know, because uh, when you're a coach, you spend so much time trying to get to year four, five, six, right? Because that's when your first recruiting class becomes junior, seniors, right, or move on. And that's what we left behind, you know, arguably, well, not arguably, the best pool of talent that Oregon has seen in a long time. Awesome guys and wishing them the best. Uh, when you come back, I don't get caught up in nostalgia theater. I don't because times change and, and things change. But what remains the same is that that green tree practice field, that the work done on there for decades, for decades, the best football players in college and professional football, blood, sweat, and tears out there every single day. The camaraderie of the alumni and the current players was something that was always really strong and was a big reason why I wanted to go to Miami. I did. I loved going to practice and watching all these former players come back. They looked like assistant coaches. I mean, they'd be jumping in there, coaching up guys, probably upsetting the coaches that they were teaching probably a little bit better than some of them. But it, uh, the, the amount of passion and true brotherhood behind it was something I was really attracted to. I was attracted to the level of competition on the field. That field looked like game day. That practice looked like an absolute knockout, drag out championship game. And I loved that, and I was attracted to that. And we want to track guys that are attracted to that as well and that understand the balance that comes with being a great student and being a great member of society as well. So in terms of, of change, I'm, you know, I mean, I don't need a GPS to get around Miami. I mean, I, it's the only place in the world where I can just, you know, know every shortcut street, every crack in every street, where the one-way stop sign, all that stuff. So um, I don't know. I haven't had much time to focus on anything else except doing what we can to get our players to their maximum potential.